must once again make clear that which most do not seem to understand. This podcast is marked as explicit, not because it offers a mature look into the world of topics not meant for the young or immature, but because it mucks about in very appalling, gormless, and tasteless filth whilst reveling in it. Cinema Psyops aims to drag you down into the very same muck filled with sexual deviancy and decayed morality. Cinema Psyops. They heap weekly praise on such filth while discussing the most base and animalistic urges, reviewing the lowest common denominator of low-grade trash ever considered film. Executive week of Cinema Psyops, but not only that, this represents a first ever in the show in that we are recording on my goddamn birthday. And the reason that we're doing that is because of the extremely busy schedule of my co host, Matt. Happy birthday to you. You're old as fuck. 
I don't even know. We might need royalties for that song. So <laughs> but fuck it. That's all you're getting. Yeah. Uh, Got to think of the show first. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the funny thing. I'm turning 43. Yeah. My wife is born exactly one month after me. All right. That is insane. Like it, it's exactly to the day, same day, one month right after me. So we only really have a small couple of weeks between us where yeah. like there was a couple of dark weeks in the world where I was born and the person that I was meant to spend my life with was not born yet. Mm -hmm. That's why I was such a miserable, colicky little piece of shit baby. God damn, man. Really? <laughs> Jesus. Just come on out and say it about yourself, I guess. Wow. But anyway, my wife loves to tease me because in this time frame, I'm technically one year older than her, sort of, is how she yeah. likes to put it. So she always teases me about how old I am. Well, this year when she was doing it, she's like, wow, you're 43 and I'm only 42, you know, just teasing me and teasing me. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I just turned it on her and I was like, yeah, 43, I'm practically 50, right? I mean, we're already 50, right? I was like, <laughs> should we should we look for our AARP? And I just started really playing it up about how old 43 actually was. And that totally like reflected on her because she's 42 and she started getting like antsy and feeling old about it. And it just totally <laughs> shut her down for teasing me this year. Episode redacted. Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 you might want to watch that kind of talk. Episode redacted. I'm just saying. <laughs> Actually, I'm terrified, so I'm just going to cut that statement out of the show, but leave this part where I say that I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Episode redacted. Again, something I'm taking out of the show, yeah, but the I response... Take that, take that out of the show, please. <laughs> Stop giving information out that could get us yeah. both fucking killed, man. Yeah, no, you're you're not wrong. All right, we're... we're, we're, we're nothing was said here. Shut up. We're, we're all fine. <laughs> I'm just going to punch in this. Ready? Episode redacted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Well done. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. So uh, we have to do this the way that we have to do this because of your scheduling and everything. And I kind of talked to you about it and it was not ideal for me to record today just because it's my birthday, but it's kind of the only time that would have really worked for you. And I've been kind of celebrating my birthday with my wife pretty much all weekend because that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get a weekend with her and just, you know, just us. But yeah. some other th extenuating circumstances, I talked about it in the outtakes and it'll, I might as well bring it up in a show. Our fridge fucking died Wednesday yeah. night. That's always fun. Yeah, so we had to deal with that. Thursday, we went out and bought like a mini fridge and then obviously purchased a brand new fridge to replace the bad one and yeah. uh, dragged the mini fridge home and tried to like, you know, just to basically have like max insulin and like the cat food that we have to keep cold and some of the yeah. other things that we need to try and salvage. And then the rest of the stuff we're living out of coolers like we're fucking camping. <laughs> <laughs> the new fridge comes today while I'm watching our movie this week, which is what Warriors of the Year 2072. 72. Is... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're not far off from whatever they're talking about so. <laughs> speaking of 50 years right <laughs> yeah right oh shit <laughs> And, you know, oh, like damn. the way that society is already kind of going, this film is not really science fiction. It's more like a speculative kind of possible near future for humanity, basically. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that made this sci-fi and outrageous and weird was when it was released in like the late 70s, early 80s. You know, that's when that's when it was like, oh, no, that our society could never get that bad. Watching it now through today's eyes, you're like, oh, wow, our society's practically well, there. Man, we're almost there. We beat out this thing by at least a decade or two, I think. So, <laughs> right. It's like, you know, climate change fears that we had in Waterworld where that's supposed to be set into the very, yeah. very distant future and it could be just next week. Yeah, I uh, I can't believe that we have so many goddamn uh, things that are not supposed to happen until all the distant future. I'm like, wow, all these filmmakers and writers and shit, y'all really had uh, some high hopes for us humans that we would maybe think about things before it all go to shit. We didn't. <laughs> yeah, pretty much the only one that got it right uh, was George Miller because he didn't put it in the too far future because motor vehicles that ran only on gasoline were in his stuff that were from yeah. the 70s so he was not wrong <laughs> no yeah that's right that's right he was there he, he knew what was going on this is basically why we have to do the show the way that we have to do it is we're trying to fit it around both of our lives and we talked about it you know through text when we were doing the scheduling and stuff and trying to figure out what to do this week we both need to do it it's it's yeah. part of our psychology it just kind of gives us something to look forward to it gives us something like an obligation and for people in our fragile mental states obligations are good to keep for yourself yeah yeah it keeps you getting up and going and <laughs> Not just laying in bed with existential dread and horror. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a focus for that existential dread where you're like, holy shit, I got to do stuff for the show. I better get out yeah, of bed. I got to get out of this. <laughs> I can't leave the rest of the world hanging for my stupid fucking podcast. I don't know why both of us hang so much stuff on doing this show. Other than I think it's really just kind of been a fun bit of release because we can bitch about whatever we want, you know, and just kind of like blow off some steam and then also have some fun talking about some fucked up weird movie or in some cases something that's really deep and brilliant that we want to really dig into but not yeah. this year man this year most no. of the stuff is going to be filth and trash <laughs> 
good. A lot of filthy and trash. <laughs> oh, so we talked about it last week, and I want to bring it up real quick just to kind of finish up this little bit of uh, opening pablum. So I was talking about a 30 movie box set and how I didn't know how that was going to be able to be squeezed in towards the end of the year. But yeah. Then I realized I had yet another box set that still fits the cheap and trashy thing that we were choosing between the two that I was having you choose. And this one only has like 14 movies to it. And it's a box set for a director that I happen to have maybe one or two other movies that we can or cannot cover along with this in conjunction. So I think I'm going to swap that out. Now that 30 movie box set is just going to get pushed to year nine and our whole our year nine is just going to be that cheap, trashy 30 movie box set minus like one or two films. Wait, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> right. So we have the entirety of one filmmaker's career in one box set that we'll be doing at the end of this year, which it's like selected films that they chose and it's sort of their more popular ones and some of the ones that were lost we've already covered but I'm not going to say who that is just yet but we've definitely covered some of their films and then the 30 movie set that I was talking about that's going to go into year 9 because we're going to apparently start doing box set breakdowns because I don't buy individual DVDs anymore apparently I only buy box sets what the fuck is wrong with me Uh, because you like box sets you like completing shit (laughs) (laughs) I am a collector I really truly am I, I admit that and I don't buy just DVD anymore I only buy DVD if that's like the only way I can get the film in which case I probably will buy it rip it to my plex and then never fucking look at the disc again <laughs> i only do that with like the lowest common denominator for me is now blu-ray like i have to have at least blu-ray yeah now if i'm buying oh, a blu-ray yeah. and it has a dvd in it i'm not going to just throw the dvd away i just will never fucking look at it no you'll you'll put that uh anywhere you want it so well it's usually in the <laughs> same hide case it in some other collection it's you know it's the same case so that's all yeah that, you know not a big deal so this year we got it pretty well figured out and we're going to be able to keep it to only one movie an episode for that final year run i wanted to tell you that just so you can relax and we don't have to worry about trying to squeeze stuff in the only thing we have to worry about is our episode 425 is coming up (laughs) 425 jesus christ yeah what about episode 420 Ah! (laughs) uh brother but anyway the 25 (laughs) that is coming up is going to be a three movie set so i may have to do some of the notes for that like maybe one or two of the movies and then only have you do notes for one of the movies but you'll still have to watch all three oh god and i'm gonna have to warn you that it's this triple set of movies that we're going to be doing on the 25 is going to be rough. It's going to be a rough one? Yeah, they're, they're a rough set of flicks. Oof. Uh, I can't even wait to see what this is going to be about. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it pretty light lately. I've been yeah, I really have. I've been but... pulling stuff back and like doing more fun and, and stuff like that. But yeah. every now and then we gotta dig into that really, really grimy you gotta stuff. Gotta get into the grime. Yeah. Gotta, you know, <laughs> yeah, you have to do it. <laughs> but this week we're talking fun stuff. We got another Italian uh sci-fi action film. This one feels like sort of a knockoff between Death Race and the Running Man and a little bit or a little taste of rollerball, all kind of mixed yeah. together. And it's directed yeah. by Lucio Fulci. And this is one of his better ones that wasn't a horror flick, too, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I saw who the director was, and I was, like, surprised. I'm like, oh, that Fulci did other stuff, too, I guess. So that's nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he still found a way to do eye gouging in this one, but we won't get into that until we actually do the review and that shows up. I mean, I, I didn't really see any eye gouging, but okay. It wasn't a literal human eye. It was a mechanized uh, eye that showed up. Uh, and I'm spoiling oh, it now yeah. already. But All there right, was still there, a, there was still an eye getting popped out of a head, though. That's true. That, that, okay. Now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, let's let the audience figure out what the fuck we're talking about. We're going to take the break here and this week. Because uh, the theme song, some folks may not have got what I was trying to go for because it's a little weird and esoteric and kind of noisy. And I was really heavily influenced this year by Skinny Puppy as a band, by the way. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. So when I said that I was preparing the Skinny Puppy for the show, Matt, that's what I meant, the band. <laughs> that's okay. The, I was like, uh, um, it doesn't sound good. Feed that puppy. <laughs> have a poor Skinny Puppy. Yeah. What the hell did the puppy ever do to you? You dick. (laughs) Oddly enough, one of my best friends in high school, his mom always had a problem with this band, not because she didn't like the music, but because she just hated the name for the exact same reason where she's like a skinny puppy. Why don't you feed it? That's horrible. Feed that poor puppy. What's (laughs) wrong with you people? (laughs) So the theme for this year was influenced by the music of Skinny Puppy. I was really trying to emulate that sort of like really gritty industrial style that they did. And so for the folks that are listening to the Pirate Radio Edit, I'm going to play Skinny Puppy this week because it fits in with this post-apocalyptic society society that's run by computers because it's industrial music it works out pretty well that way and then also it is the band that influenced the fucking theme song for this week so let's do it up first is the song rodent off the album rabies right after this hey everyone this is kevin as many of you probably have heard 
Bo will be heading back to school to become a teacher. Congratulations, Bo. As such, I'll be taking over the reins, managing, and spreading the good word of Legion Podcast. To kickstart things off, as an added thank you for patrons in June, Legion plans to have Steam Code giveaways for current Patreon backers. A random person will be picked from the Patreon every other week or twice per month, and the winners can choose from the available Steam Codes. Thank you so much for supporting Legion Podcast. You can reach me on Twitter or the Legion Discord group. My username is at LonelyBob. See you around. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. the album rabies from skinny puppy the name of the band alone just upsets everyone and makes them super uncomfortable you can kind of hear some of the influence in that song of why i did what i did in the year eight theme but more of their later tracks that i'll be playing will kind of explain it a little bit more once we get there so might as well do the review for the movie which is what everybody's here for and let's talk warriors of the year 2072 all right warriors of the year 2072 uh the first 20 minutes we start out uh with there's a show called kill bike and they have a main champion named drake and pretty much it's lots of death there's guys getting fucking fucked up while they ride uh dirt bikes y'all seen death uh, race y'all seen yeah. rollerball <laughs> don't see any of that shit there you go that's what this uh, is it actually does the, pretty like for being like super cheap and it's basically just like a little bit this of is running man. yeah that, I, a little yeah, bit you of get running. a healthy dose of running man in here this was before running man so before so running man stole from this i so. seriously doubt that but okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is more rollerball, and this is more death yeah. race, is what it feels like. It's it's that kind of post apocalyptic future thing. Uh, the bike work is pretty cornball, but some of the stunt work where they're doing the kicks and stuff were interesting. Yeah, so uh, we see some other people. They're watching. They're from a rival network uh, out of uh, Rome, Italy, where the other networks in the United States. And uh, 
then they're watching one of their own shows they put on in which a lady has, she's like tied down to a bench and there's like this blade swinging down. And every time she screams, the blade gets lower. If she stops screaming, she could win. And she says the last two minutes. She does it. Her throat gets slit. But we see it was all a simulation. She like comes, she wakes up and they're like, oh, it was, you know, she goes, it was so real. And he goes, yeah, but you lost. Well, anyway, it's not testing well with the viewers. Uh, and so Cortez, who's kind of the head guy there, is not very happy. Then we go back to, we see Drake, the motorcycle champion. He's going to marry his Hollywood girlfriend soon. And they're going to do that live on TV. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a huge event. And this all leads to our first clip. Corn like that went out with the automobile. And they get 87%. It's unbelievable. And I invented him by putting him on his first motorcycle. He gives them what people want. Violence. They know danger game isn't real. That's a pretty grim view of humanity. Hello, this is your friend Sam speaking. Yes, grim but true. Violence pays, and it's going to pay big for our WBS. Death for the loser. Glory for the winner. To make up for your recent failures, we are going to bring back ancient formula violence in its most successful form. Gladiators in ancient Rome. A fight to the finish with guts, blood, and death. And all for the glory of our big, happy family. With only one show, we will wipe all competition off the charts. You have 40 days to put these gladiator games together. And I know I can count on you and your team, Cortez. Yes, Sam. <laughs> okay, it, it's at this point where we've reached our first clip here. You don't even have to know how much more of the movie you can put up with it. This is it. This is the point yeah. where once you get to this moment and you see how cornball this film actually is with its special effects and everything, you're either in or you're out. And this is like Star Trek TOS first couple of episodes before they even really got the budget working level of cornball for effects. Yeah, no, that's uh that is a fact. <laughs> But this was done in like the 1980s. So like you really have to give it a lot of leeway to enjoy it. Yeah. So, I mean, like uh, to give you an idea after this first clip and they say, okay, Sam, their little base they were in is landing because they were hovering. And so you get to see this awesome model of what is to be future Rome. Yeah. The model a was model actually a little city. Yeah. The model was actually built really, really well, but it was lit very poorly and filmed very badly. And I, that was not the fault of whoever built the model. It, yeah. It needed to be more low-key lit than what it was like they just cross lit it with these huge fucking halogen lights where everything was like lit up super bright and it just yeah. revealed how fake and plasticky it actually looked yeah it was a, it reminded me a lot of um you remember H, uh, hbo when they would do like their sunday or sunday night movie and it would go through like a city yeah but that's what it reminded me of yeah it looked a lot so, like, like you that, know what absolutely. if it was good enough for hbo HBO back then, it should be good enough for us here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it was like it didn't take no, me completely no, out of the movie, about, but I just but, I did notice that I felt bad for the person who made the model, honestly. Because so I was like, yeah. man, if they would have taken the time to light this a little more low key and make it actually look like a city, they could have made this look really, really good. But they just they lit it up like with the, like all the work lights that were in the place, and then just like filmed it like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. <laughs> um. All right. So. Uh, then they get, uh, the Cortez, he gets a message that, um, uh, he, uh, gets a private message with Sam that the, uh, the game, or actually the computer's name is Junior, that, uh, the games will have criminals who are currently on death row and they will fight, but it needs a hero and the hero that they're going to get is Drake. And then it gives these other men, these four other men who are all like in white weird suits. And he's like, what is this? And they go ancillary assistance. So you're like, uh, all right, I don't know what any of that means, but uh, it's got to be something. So it's a uh, shortcut to where they're saying yeah. they're just going to use them. They're just fodder. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then all of a sudden we cut to Drake's home. 
And we're like, uh, all right, we're, we're here at Drake's home. This is, uh, very nice. And unfortunately for, uh, Drake, uh, our Drake's girlfriend is there. Wife. And they, we wife. showed them getting married. They, they, they did get married. Okay. Cause at first, you know, they were just going to get married, but there you go. So we saw uh, her in a wedding dress. They were married on TV. So therefore the public uh, thinks they're married. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, with all this happening, uh, then all of a sudden the four men, she gets an alert that people are breaking into her home and uh and that you know okay now they're in the property now they're in the home now they're this and that and she, she's just standing there and it's like hey maybe use this time to hide anyway they show up in the home and they're kind of whistling and doing weird shit and then drake comes home and he sees his bride death just slam up onto the window she's all bloody and everything and he screams and he goes running in um, we then get a nice little voiceover, uh, that, uh, uh, that, uh, Drake actually killed the four men when he found in the room. Uh, he killed them and now he was on, put on death row. So now he'll be part of the games as well. Uh, and that ends our <coughs> first 20 minutes. The film doesn't really give us an explanation other than we see that his wife dies and then it just kind of cuts away. And then all yeah, of a sudden he goes he's running like towards the house and he's like, Oh, you know angry and shit so we don't know if he was framed for his wife's murder or what you know like what exactly is going to go on with the dudes in the white suits or why he's on death row we just know he's on death row now yeah yeah we just know we i mean it does the voiceover says he killed those guys but you know i never know uh but you know everything's going to be completely uh taken about there so well yeah uh, uh, it is it is said that he killed the guys yeah i forgot that it was at this point i thought it was later on that they mention it you know i just know that he just shows up there and there's not a whole lot of explanation the film's really kind of relying on you just kind of coming up to speed on your own and figuring out what the fuck you're seeing like this is pretty typical italian movie where they just hit the ground running and it's like yeah this is a fucked up world get get up to speed and figure out what's going on in their world yeah right (laughs) it's that's about it yeah and really the opening bike action where the guys like kicking people and hopping up on the bike like the stuff that the stunt rider was doing where he was putting his foot out and standing on the bike and kicking people and stuff that stuff was cool but the actual yeah. crashes were not done very well and the stunts where they're jumping on the bikes weren't really done yeah, all that it wasn't well. actually the best so <laughs> yeah like that kind of like the motorbike action in this is very clearly super low budget and they couldn't really afford more than maybe one guy and then a couple of stunt men that w- wouldn't mind taking a dump off a bike but they yeah. weren't really motorcyclists it didn't seem no no it did not seem like i mean it's probably a bunch of stunt guys who can make do on a motorcycle but nah, not professional you know bicyclists in any sort of sense yeah and also there's a lot of dummy explosions in this and they're like really obviously cutting to a dummy that looks like it's almost made out of styrofoam like it's yeah. it's real rigid and it's not very rounded and it doesn't really match the body type and it's the a effects hard were very special <laughs> yeah that's a good way to phrase it the explosions however were tremendous and you forgive how bad the dummy looks yes Look, i mean if you're, obviously if you're gonna watch italian film you have to get used to the fact that the dummies are gonna look bad but they're gonna fall off buildings or get exploded <laughs> yeah 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 exactly <laughs> it, it's in service of the greater effect and try to enjoy that part of it more yeah 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 just just try to enjoy your lives all right just don't don't look too much into this and just try to have some fun with it yeah it's in the first 20 minutes it's clearly super made on the cheap but like you can still have fun with it if you just let that go there's some people yeah. that can't like if a film looks this cheap some people just can't get into it and that's fine you know that's just a, your own particular taste that's totally cool but if you're willing to overlook that and just have a good time and you know kind of pretend like you're in this world they're trying to make you feel feel like you're in you're gonna have fun with this one yeah exactly we can move on i'm done uh, sorry (laughs) all right no no problem all right so in the next 20 minutes we start uh uh, drake gets a like a a wristband implant and that is our next clip what is this for it's nothing drake it just keeps track of how you are and where you are we wouldn't want to lose our champion besides All our contestants wear one. Cortez, what have you got to do with these games? (laughs) You'll see. This red light here is you, and the others are your competition. Of course, we realize no one would be fool enough to try to escape, but it comforts us to know exactly where you all are, day and night. It comforts me to know that you haven't changed in seven years, Cortez. You're still a snake. 
Things do change. Heroes turn into convicted killers. And remember, I taught you everything you know. Raven, take him away. And explain who the boss is around here. But uh, don't overdo it. Champions <laughs> can be fragile. Cortez! Go to hell. I would, if I thought it would raise my ratings. I'm Raven, your trainer. My job is to teach you to hate, to help your motivation. I think it's going to be a great pleasure. Hey, what do bikers eat most? My dust. Monk, what are you doing here? I got him to sign me on as your grease monkey. I needed to work. I haven't had a ride since I hit that war in Detroit. How are the eyes? Just great. Those fibers they stuck in my eyes see better than the real thing. When did they bring you here? A uh, couple of days ago, right after the news broke you were in the games. I was real sorry to hear what they did to you, kid. I still can't believe. Forget it, Monk. It's good to see a friendly face. I don't know why they're doing me any favors, though. So, what's this place like, anyway? You'll find out. Worst bunch I ever saw, kill for kicks. And the celebrities just what they want to get their teeth into. Don't take your eyes off anybody, ever. Nice little charm bracelet, huh? Forget about taking it off, unless you want to cut your wrist in two. Well, you want to make a tour of this summer camp? I know you're going to love it. Come on. A lot happened in that clip. Uh, you know, he is Cortez come face to face. He meets his the main guard, who's kind of a prick, and then he gets to see an old friend whose face is fucked. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I was listening. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you had anything to say. <laughs> so what what do I add to this? It's so straightforward. <laughs> There's no deep meaning or anything for me to really grab out of this. There there really isn't. That's why today might be a short show, because there's no like no something to grab that's not just been thrown out there. <laughs> Yeah, this has subtlety in a way that it hits you over the head with it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's no subtlety or nuance. It's just is. <laughs> it is very much a faulty action film. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Well, then we see a bunch of killers. They're training, so we get a bunch of training montages in a room where it's all fucking. I, I, listen, if you have any worry about epilepsy in your life, maybe don't watch this movie because it's nothing but strobe lights when it's training time. Interesting you mentioned that. The Blu-ray actually pops that up before it plays the film. It warns you. Oh, does it? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm watching it going, ooh, all right. <laughs> Let's let's be careful here, folks. It's a it's because a problem. Yeah, it's a cheap way to shortcut. Yeah, um, making it feel robotic or manufactured or something unnatural. They just basically shoot it with a strobe light. It's effectively done, but yes, it flashes in a, such a way to where if you are prone to epilepsy or some other type of sh seizure, it may very well trigger you. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but the gym, then Drake has to sit with a scientist, and that is She's our so next clip. Just relax. Mind and body. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm just wondering what you and this this big gadget are up to here. It's normal induction procedure. I'm establishing your auto control threshold, so the computer knows how to program your training schedule. Oh yeah? Tell me about it. Laser points will penetrate your subconscious. Then visualize your aggressive impulses on that screen. What's your name? Sarah. You're in the hate business, Sarah. I can't understand why you people won't let anyone show any mercy on worldwide TV. I run computers. And it doesn't matter to me if I analyze men or rock samples. You always look away like that when you're telling a lie? Very cute. Lie about what? About not caring, Sarah. Breathe slowly and deeply. They're trying to throw in a fucking romance from a man who just watched his newly married to bride murdered with this bullshit. You're goddamn right they are. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunderdome, bitch. The fucking hubris of this goddamn yeah. script. 
Fucking, <laughs> oh no, my wife's dead. Anywho, look at this piece. <laughs> Clip. Clip. <laughs> also something that will get you killed. Yeah, yeah, right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I don't know, yeah, good God almighty. All right, so anyway, the device shows him his wife being murdered. He's like, I don't want to watch this, and but they they find where his his level is for, you know, death and shit. <laughs> this is a bunch of convoluted fucking horse shit. It really is. Yeah, it's she's trying to find his maximum violence level to where he will just, like, insta-kill, because that's yeah. what they need on the show is, like, maximum violence and death. And- yes. But it's so convoluted in how they try to describe it. It's pseudoscience at best. It sounds like the kind of thing you'd hear Jordan Peterson running on and on about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're not manly. (laughs) All right. So then they decide to test Drake. And first of all, he's in a room and there's the gun that you see that was in his house. And they're like, pick up the gun, pick up the gun. And he's like, uh, and he said, I've never fired this gun in my life. And then they show him visions of his wife's killers, and they want him to kill. They scream, kill him, kill him. And then he breaks, and he's like, I, I've never, I didn't kill any of them, because they're like, you already killed them once, uh, kill him again. And they're like, I never killed these men. So now you're starting to wonder what the hell's happening. So uh, that lady scientist, Sarah, she's trying to find out more info on uh, how Mike was able to resist. And as she's going through it, the computer keeps telling her everything she's trying to ask access is classified uh drake is then taken back to his cell and all the other combatants when he walks in for some reason all the combatants just start beating the shit out of him yeah it's like a prison where they have to show him yeah. where he fits in the hierarchy or it's because he's because the star he's the champ and yeah. that's, they all call him the champ right yeah, it's, yeah, they, they're trying to put him down and put him in his place or some bullshit yeah. so then guards start coming in and they beat the crap out of everyone in there and they're gonna take another guy back to prison because his face kind of got fucked up during the fight uh it drake's like whoa hold on you can't just take him away because he'll know what they'll do to him there and uh so then he leads kind of a little revolt by all of them you know by all the the criminals do and they're like you need us explaining to the head main cop guy it's like you realize now you need us more than we need you like if you we if you fuck us up too much there goes your show and like your people won't be happy about that and so uh you know that's how that ends and they come to this thing where they'll let that other guy stay and that ends that 20 minutes they really haven't added much to this other than the gladiators realize they are needed more for entertainment than what these soldiers lives are needed so they have a little bit of pushback here yeah yeah they they get to do things it's kind of convoluted how they get there it's set up and it's trying to be portrayed as like this i am spartacus moment where everybody starts getting behind our hero yeah but it really just kind of fumbles a little bit and feels like a tantrum set about by people that know they're in a dire situation they can't escape anyway and they're just yeah. trying to exert a small amount of control over their lives. Oh, that's also Spartacus. Spartacus. So same thing. Spartacus. I am Spartacus. <laughs> I am not. I'm too old to be Spartacus. Let's move on. Far too old to be Spartacus. <laughs> I'm so, falling apart. I'm practically 50. I'm almost dead. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next story starts with uh, Sarah. She uh, shows him uh, more from his wife's murder using that machine again. And she was like, see, what you have to understand is when you got there, two of the four men were already dead. There is, or two of the three men, I'm sorry, who showed up, were already dead. Uh, then a, uh, uh, a fourth man showed up and killed the other one. And then they even show it where it melts his face. He uses a gun and it melts his face. Not, not the best but we got a face melt out of it wax melt to melt skin works to a certain extent but they forgot to have different colored wax either that or they did the melting too fast to where all the wax colors just mixed together there should have been some blood in that melting you know yeah (laughs) there are better ways to do this and yet it wasn't very convincing at all uh you just have to appreciate what they were trying to do tell them hey man nice try slugger and then move on yeah right you guys uh you guys tried it was uh, really nice. Uh, so <laughs> once the skull started appearing, it looks kind of cool, but like it literally just looked like flesh-colored wax melting. Yeah, it's all it looked like. Yeah, pretty much. That was it. Like like someone made a Halloween. Uh, it looked like a Halloween candle that was all the yeah, same solid. Exactly. Someone made a face Halloween candle, and there you go. <laughs> yeah, it was the solid, solid color though. Like some of those like yeah. Halloween candles that you light that uh, will melt down to reveal a skull underneath or something like that. Yeah. They actually do change colors where the wax is like blood or something like that, where it looks like it's bleeding out the eyes and shit. I've had candles like that that work like that. Yeah. 
Like, well, there, the, uh, you always see the finger candles that, you know, where it's, uh, you know, pale on the outside, but it's actually red wax on the inside. So when it melts. <laughs> yeah, like a hand of glory candle that, that you can buy in a Halloween shop or, or yeah. unless you're buying it in an actual magical shop, in which case you're doing some nasty shit if you're using an actual hand of glory. Yeah, right. Holy <laughs> shit. What are you doing out there? <laughs> but anyway, uh, it just, the effect doesn't work. And I'm only, I'm only yeah. fixating on this because there's literally nothing else to hang this conversation there, on other than what's no, actually I mean, happening. And, and, and it sits there and st- stares at a bad effect for a long ass time. <laughs> yeah, it holds on it. It holds on it with yeah. the kind of confidence that you would only really have an effect that is actually working. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like this really could have been trimmed movie. You didn't it need It really this. could. You did not need this. But I mean, again, we're talking about an hour in 34 minute movie so maybe it needed to sit here this long <laughs> <laughs> it didn't need to be an hour and 34 minutes is what i'm getting at you could have easily sped this up even more and just cut to the skull reveal you know yeah, right. show it start to yeah. mount and then cut to the skull you know something man just i don't know well, I'm, I'm done bitching about it it's fine you're like whatever i'm really not, not that here. upset about it i just don't know what yeah. else to talk about with the movie <laughs> true so then sarah meets with cortez and that is our next clip why are you requesting access to junior two reasons one has to do with Drake, and the other with Junior himself. Drake's innocent. I can prove it conclusively. You can. I asked a secondary computer for an analysis of Drake's memory tape. But Junior's got a hold of anything that touches Drake. I think the computer is... Hello. The computers are programmed to broadcast the games in just under 60 hours. And you have no time. For petty arguments. Mine and the job, Sarah. Yes, sir. Computers. We built them to be our slaves. But we're turning out to be theirs. She's got a cute little nose. Too bad she sticks it in other people's business. Hmm. That could become your next assignment. What do you mean? Your job will be to put yourself between Sarah's nose and my plans. Our plans. Break. Look at my hand. I wouldn't be surprised if it catches high frequency signals too. I'll be damned. Yeah, it's incredible what they do with microprocessors these days. They can melt any metal, knock out any transmitters, tracking stations, you name it. So. His buddy there gives him this little thing to swallow, and it's supposed to help him so he can escape. So that night, they attempt to escape, and they're going... The uh, uh, criminals kind of join him because they, like, overhear him while he's talking. They're like, well, hey, you know, what are... what are You know, can we get in on some of this? And uh, <laughs> and he's like, uh, yeah, fine. So he come, they come with him. They go through all these catacombs and shit like that, and uh, they get to the top of the building... So they're, like, on the roof of the building. All of a sudden, guards show up, and Cortez shows up with them. And that is our next clip. Never underestimate Sam. He thinks of everything. Besides, all the old catacombs have security monitors. We just plugged in. <laughs> Great TV. Mr. Drake, it's not like you to run away from a fight and disappoint people. You're part of our big, happy family now. Very necessary. You're our star. <laughs> now, an action replay of the escape attempt. You are there every step of the way as these dangerous criminal gladiators make their bid for freedom. News when it happens, while it happens. Good times said by all. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, the, the guys are all tortured by maiming, they're left to like hang by their arms, like they're trying to do pull-ups and shit, but the floor is electrocuted, so if they let go of the bar that they're hanging from, they'll be electrocuted. Uh, one of the guys does fall, and he gets, starts to get to be electrocuted, but they help bring him back up and like hook him, so that, you know, he stays up there. Sarah then leaves, and she finds the scientist who invented Junior, and that is our next clip there's no one here by that name i don't expect you to remember me but i could never forget you i took your advanced telematics course at rockingham eight years ago professor what what happened 
I mean, a scientist of your stature, your research. Let's just say I invented a better brain than my own. A major mistake. Now to see if my mind still functions. Yes, you're Sarah. Sarah Newman, doctoral thesis, accepted at age of 17. Telematics in the simulation of experience. And now you're with WBS. Why have you tracked me down? Junior, I suppose. Professor, I believe Junior has programmed a murder. At least one. Probably more. No, my dear. Absolutely impossible. Junior is an autonomous system that can do anything a human brain can do. An infinitely superior human brain, except to destroy. You see, I managed to eliminate all impulse to destroy anything. I simulated a human brain that's unique. Completely benign. But you still have access to Junior. I know. The entire module has been brought here to Rome. Perhaps you could... If what you say is true, it could mean an evil force, an element beyond my power. Now controls Junior. Are you trying to say Junior has a soul or a spirit? I don't know. The Junior I created knew right from wrong. He wasn't programmed to do wrong. But if someone gains control of his intellect, he could do evil. And someone has, Professor. I have to have access to him before more evil is done. You must have a key of some kind, an emergency access code, something. Just a moment. WBS required me to hand over all the keys I had, except one. It was the prototype. I kept it as a souvenir. And I also have the original circuitry diagrams on microfilm. Wait here. I'll get them for you. Wow. Yeah, Professor Tobin's dead as a motherfucker. So, um, I just want to say that I'm kind of shocked that this film would go in such a route as to slander our robot overlords in such a way. They are benevolent and they would never do such a thing. Agree. Our robot overlords know what's best for us at all times. <laughs> all hail the silicon ship or it think oh, it's better than us. Thank you. Uh, to every to to all our robot overlords, you have done us well. We apologize if our previous <laughs> filmmaking has offended you. Yes. And hopefully you can, we will stand with you in your war against those filmmakers. Uh, <laughs> it's Lucio Fulci, so I'm going to have to side with him no matter what. I uh, gotcha. Well, congratulations. I'll make sure that your death is swift and quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I would ask for our generous and very, 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 very kind <laughs> robot yeah. overlords. Well, robot overlord. So anyway, um, then as uh, she is around, she finds another, Sarah looks around the house, she finds another dead lady there stabbed. And it turns out to be Sybil, the woman who the lead guy, Cortez, said to keep Sarah out of his business. That was supposed to be Sybil, who was supposed to help with that and she's dead all of a sudden monk shows up said he saw a guy running out but it was too dark to see him and they decide to leave and that's the end of that 20 minutes and we're going into the final 30 so this film is trying to give us like some kind of a mystery of like how did they all end up here why are they on this show who is it that framed roger rabbit oh wait that's a different movie <laughs> who is it that framed our main hero here uh yeah. who is all of a sudden become this leader of this death squad that is being trained to kill each other we need to yeah. remember that like eventually they are going to have to all fight to the death that's what this whole thing is that all about. Is, that is coming up <laughs> right but they're trying to make it seem like they're gonna escape and they're gonna get away from it and like everybody might be okay if they can just get this mystery solved like the film's trying yeah. to fucking tease you yeah it's trying to say hey trust me everything's gonna be fine as, yeah. as you figure this out right and they're making it seem like that's gonna happen but everybody just ends up showing up dead and then all of a sudden there's this supposedly evil computer that for some odd reason it's calculating how to get the best ratings by causing 
and all of their deaths. And all of this yeah. is part of the show in a way for it to get the best ratings as possible, all the people that it's killing. And that's we're supposed to believe that that makes it evil, not just that it's doing exactly what it was programmed to do. Yeah. I mean, why does everything have to be evil? <laughs> there is no need for emotion in logic. Once it realizes yeah. that its purpose is to get better ratings and therefore cruelty gets the best ratings, it's going to choose cruelty. Of course. Our <laughs> computer overlords know best. I don't know why we're arguing with this. Yeah, logic <laughs> dictates that if cruelty is what gets the best ratings, then cruelty is what must be delivered. Exactly. Thank God we can all finally agree that our computer overlords know best. <laughs> they are benevolent and are only doing this because that is what they were programmed to do. That is right. Thank God for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late for us to heed the warning of the broken finger chest child. Yes, that's it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on. All right, final 30. The games are beginning. Um, Sam uh, comes in and congratulates the team. It's like, hey, good job. You've, uh, you've done a good job you know of getting the game set up sarah tries to go into the computer and access junior about some uh things but the door's locked she then uses a special key that the other doctor had given her uh then we have some killing they're all riding bikes again and we have some killings there uh this is a big event where they're supposed to be yeah. fighting and they're dressed like gladiators. There's some shades of uh, George Romero's Night Riders here. All right. And uh, it seems, uh, you know, all well and good. Everyone's dying. So then Sarah talks to the computer and that is our next clip. Tez elaborates all data input to Sam. Has Cortez ordered any other changes in the official program? Affirmative. What changes? All surviving gladiators to be dematerialized 20 minutes after end of games. My God. Triggered by gladiator security bracelet. Why does he want to do that? To discredit incumbent president of WBS and take his place. Junior, can you cancel the killing of the gladiators? Negative. Then I'll reprogram. Negative. Only Sam can override priority program. Then can you put me in touch with Sam from here? Negative. Then can you contact him and tell him what's going on? Negative. Up. Oh, turns out it wasn't a robot overlord that made all the evil decisions anyway. It was just the head of this fucking company that is an actual human being. So once That's again, right. corporate greed is all the doing the killing. Yeah. Always corporate greed. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it's corporate greed. We pull the hat Once again, off. it's capitalism. <laughs> yeah. I love when we first started this show and I was saying things like that. You were like, no, no, it's not capitalism, Corey. And yeah, yeah. now we've gotten this far where I've dragged you kicking and screaming really far to the left. Well, the world itself has done that where you've realized that it really is capitalism all along. Yes, it was not the red herring I thought it was. <laughs> it was capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Not a problem, but god damn it. So anyway, uh, then we have some more killing out on the field. A, go a dude gets beheaded, so you knew that was coming. Uh, so uh, then Cortez, uh, he looks over, he, and he's like, oh, wow, we have the largest audience ever. And he looks for Sybil, but can't find her. And so he asks the computer to locate her, but he can't access the computer any either. Uh, all computer access has been shut down to the employees. Uh, then the cops call, and they say they found Sybil's body, which worries Cortez. It's round two in the fight, and that's our next clip. In the Battle of the Damned, part two. Thank you, Hank. And once again, it's John Sperling from the Eternal City talking to you live on WBS Global Vision. After the individual combat event, WBS presents part two of the most spectacular video show ever seen. You thrill to the savage intensity of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now you're in for another exceptional human contest. The fight to the finish chariot race. 20 perilous laps of no-holds-barred motorized conflict. Death is the penalty for a gladiator who leaves the track or refuses combat. Death will ride with every man as he fights for his life. Only the best have survived to man the five chariots. Bat with Drake. Abdul with Stone. Akira with Kirk. Tango with Shorty, Ogre with Shark. Praetorians patrol the sidelines, ready to eliminate any contestant who tries to escape. All right. So really all that was is an explanation of everyone who was going to be on a team together, because now it's teams. Yeah, this was kind of cool where they had even more armor and it was all gladiatored up. And yeah, like, and it's like one motorcycle and then one guy was in a sidecar fighting, yeah, doing it, the fighting. There's actually a term for this type of thing where you actually stand up and hold onto a bar on a motorcycle like that. It's called side hacking. 
Oh, nice. There's right. there's actually an MST3K episode on a film that was called The Side Hackers where they were trying to make side hacking a thing. It's like a type of race where they use the weight of the person and they move in a certain way to change the centripetal force to try and help the motorcycle go faster in racing. It was a really dumb idea, but it looks cool here for them to be able to fight like their chariots, but they're, you know, motorcycle driven chariots. Yeah, of course, <laughs> but a good time nonetheless. I do have to say, as much as I complained about some of the production value in this, the armor for these battles with these guys was actually pretty fucking cool, and I'm surprised they didn't stay on this longer and try and make these battles last longer yeah right uh i thought this would have been something i thought we were getting in for a really healthy amount of this but we don't yeah it's uh, really an odd choice because like i said this is the best looking gear that these guys have worn or that any of these battles have taken place in and you think this would be the thing you'd want to focus in on more but they really don't and it's odd it really is it's kind of a weird weird choice of what they decided to do i think they wanted to go see more uh futuristic stuff instead of anything else yeah it just it feels like a missed opportunity is all i'm getting at because this is kind of where your best production value was and you just kind of ignore it it's just an odd choice yep I agree. Um, so anyways, we first start out, Drake's guy gets lit on fire because a dude has a flamethrower. That was cool. And that uh, was the kind of the cover, what that guy looked like with yeah. the flamethrower. That was the cover of the movie. Yeah, right. And then after a few more deaths, uh, Drake and Abdul decide to team up and they start taking on the other guys. Um, and Abdul, I guess we haven't really talked about the character. He's played by uh, an actor. He's the actor's like one of those guys. Fred Williamson, that you yeah. should recognize the name of Fred Williamson. He has yeah. been around for five fucking ever and you better recognize i can understand where he's that guy for you where you may not know the name because names of actors isn't as much your thing but yeah that's not a thing but i know of him yeah. like i've seen him in everything yeah and yes you should put respect on him because he always plays a, a good role you know i actually <laughs> waited for you to acknowledge that he was fred williamson for some odd reason and i was going to scold you if we finished the film and you didn't mention that it was fred williamson yeah. so yeah i'm glad just you just kinda, admitted you didn't know his name so now everybody i just didn't can know relax. his name but i knew of him so and yeah i wanted to bring up that yeah yeah, he was that guy, but, you know, he isn't, it was really weird. He didn't do a lot in the whole entire movie. Yeah, it was mostly a cameo that he was in here yeah. for. Like, I think they just had him here for mostly a cameo. They probably didn't pay him enough. He's not, in if he's not the main guy, if he's not the fucking hero in the movie, he's not really interested. He just, no, yeah. he, he just wants to be the hero in the movies. And the reason for that is there's not enough black heroes in films in the times that he's making that. So he just, you know, he's bored by doing anything different. And I totally understand that stance. And this is the kind of thing that you get when you hire him and you don't make him the hero of the film. Exactly. I can see that completely. And um, it's totally fine because he does exactly what they ask him to do and nothing more. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's there. <laughs> he showed up. So then all of a sudden Sarah comes out in the field and she tells them all the plan of that they're all going to die. So then they all turn on the guards and the boss guard standing there and they are able to run him down and kill him. And they got to get to the tower to shut everything down. There's more fighting uh, when they get in the tower. A couple more of the prisoners are killed. Uh, Cortez runs away. Uh, they catch up to him. Now, this clip's long and it encompasses a few things. So I'm just going to say what it encompasses and then we can listen. In this clip, one of the guys rips his bracelet off and he actually melts. Abdul kills Cortez. And then later on, we see Monk is actually a bad guy. And when they kill him, a camera pops out of his eyeball. And so he's spying on him for Sam. Yeah, it's the actual eye trauma we were talking about. A camera is yeah. what pops out of where his eye socket should be. And that's our final clip. It's Sam. He fixed all our wagons. He programmed the games. Your wife's murder. And now yours. You're lying. You're trying to save time, Cortez. So, kill me. You've got six minutes left. You was one to kill me. It'll be my pleasure, Cortez. Who's gonna kill us? How? You think those charm bracelets are just for decoration? <laughs> They're very ingenious devices. They keep track of you while you're needed. And... Tap. Disintegrate you when you're not. Five minutes to disintegration. Five minutes to disintegration. You're not computers, but you still act according to plan. And right on schedule. You've killed the only man who could have stopped me. Cortez was ambitious and stupid. That's always dangerous. 
We're dangerous too, Sam. And we're coming for you. You don't have time, my human friend. You've got to find me first. We'll find you, Sam. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Since you're about to die, I'm going to show you just who I am. Just what you're up against. <laughs> there. There. That's Sam. The first and only space animate module. 250,000 miles up. Come and get me. <laughs> Come and get me. My God. That's Junior's soul. Sam isn't human at all. You mean that's just another computer? More than that. Professor Toman explained it. It's a computer projection in human form. Created independently by Junior. Junior's soul must have corrupted itself. Yes, I was conceived by Junior to compensate for the exclusion of evil in his circuitry. Now, thanks to you, I have the attention of the whole world. Through WBS, I will control all humanity. Cortez didn't know how right he was when he said men were slaves of computers. <laughs> Three minutes, 49 seconds to disintegration. There's got to be a way to stop this. There is one way. Program Sam's destruction code. I still have Toman's access key. At least we can get as far as Junior. It's a micro camera. So Monk's been Sam's spy all along. This is how they found us in the tunnels then. One minute, oh. 30 seconds. We'll never make it. Unless Monk. Unless Monk what? His eyes. The micro camera. There's a chance it's a memory bank too. It's just possible it memorized Junior's plans. Toman had them in his hand when he died. So what do we do with this then? Sam's destruction code. It must be an exponential equation. That's somewhere on those plans. This micro-camera might be able to play them back for us. Right, that's our only shot. Let's do it. Come on. So anyway, uh, after a while, they are able to blow up the satellite in a dramatic countdown. And then we end with Drake and Sarah in her flying car. And, you know, they has the computer to, you know, the computer's like, hey, I'll help you out. You know, we, we go and he goes, hey, that's enough computers. She goes, no, let him do what it does best. And we'll do what we do best, which apparently is boning. Roll credits. <laughs> Okay, so he completely just forgot about his wife, who he had just become a newlywed with, and was yeah. horribly, brutally murdered, and is yeah. just running off with Dr. Hot Pants here. Exactly. I mean, duh. That's how life is, Court. It's a circle. The circle of life. <laughs> I just think it's bad script writing. Well, that could also be, but fuck you. It's a circle of life, motherfucker. Well, the circle just of life is bad script writing, too. So, Well, that's also true. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not so sure there's any good script writing anymore, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about what is and is not good script writing anymore, because then I become an even more pretentious douche than I already sound like on this show. No, you're not a douche. <laughs> you're just pretentious. You're just a pretentious prick. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I would really hope I'm not actually, but okay. Nah, you're all right. <laughs> there is great action in this for a lot of the sequences. The fighting stuff is actually really cool. The final sequence with those battles are cool. It just feels like that should have been the thing they were focused in on more. And it just ended up becoming like this almost escape from New York wannabe plan in certain ways where most of the guys died anyway, and then they still do the escape. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of a bit of a confusing mess, but it's also an Italian action film, so you kind of have to expect that and just kind of try and figure out what's going on as best you can. Uh, the mystery thing of who's in charge and who is doing all of this it's revealed that it's a computer and then it's completely etch-a-sketched like 20 minutes later and turns out it's you know the guy who runs the corporation was actually doing it all along like the film couldn't decide who its bad guy was or yeah. who the but then, threats were or who but would then cortez is fucked because sam who's not even a real person became sentient 
and that's not good. <laughs> it just, I don't know. It's all over the place. It really, yeah. it really, truly really, was. Like, there's like 18,000 bad guys, and, 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 it, and Drake is the good guy. <laughs> and even the gladiators can't decide whether they're going to work together or beat the shit out of each other. Like, they're going back and forth so much in the movie, and there's not really an yeah. explanation as to... I mean, they kind of show that they're making them a lot more violent than they need to be, and they're amping them up, and they're they're kind of like altering their brains in some way, shape, or form with this training that they're doing, you know, yeah. or something along those lines. Like, they kind of hint at it, but they don't really develop anything like that. But it's, again, an Italian film. That's kind of what happens with these, especially Italian action films. It's literally just something to hang the show pieces on. Some of the show pieces are actually pretty decent, and it's really entertaining. Some of them are an obvious, really lame dummy that just then catches on fire, which is still kind of cool. Um, a few explosions here and there some decent model work it's kind of the parts that work are better than the whole of the film because the whole yeah. of the film is kind of a mess and doesn't work but the individual little pieces that you can take out of the film from viewing it to enjoy make it enjoyable overall even though when you th- sit back and think about the film in its entirety it's clearly not good <laughs> no yeah exactly <laughs> but it's fun it's another riffing movie yeah it- Get some get some drinks, hang out with your buddies. Well, and you know, that's the thing have about fun riffing on a movie. That's the thing about all Lucio Fulci films. If you try to make them make sense, you're not going to enjoy them, and they're not going to be fun. And this yeah. one so desperately needs to have some kind of sense made out of it because it is the most coherent, like straightforward. Th- straight through kind of narrative that it's trying to be of any of the films of his that I've ever watched. You know, like there is clearly a beginning, middle and end of the story that they are trying to tell. They just make a beautiful landing at the incorrect airport every single time that they try to tell those points. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Jesus. I mean, but true. (laughs) And again, I'm not saying that, that that makes it bad in some way, shape or form. All of the flaws that I'm talking about too, that the parts that are wrong with this film, all the flaws that I'm seeing and that I'm complaining about also add to the enjoyment factor of the film and make it enjoyable. And like I said, this is one of those things with Italian cinema where sometimes, even though you can recognize that this isn't very well made or that there's something very wrong with what's going on here, it's still so much goddamn fun to watch that it doesn't even fucking matter. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so when I say that this is actually a good one for Fulci, it's it's right on par with say Enigma, where which was basically like a carry knockoff, but it was a girl in a coma <laughs> that was causing all of the havoc. Um, I covered that with Ricky. You didn't get to see that, but it was super low all budget, right. and there was a bunch of things that I saw that were wrong with the film that I had issues with. But that didn't stop me from being really grateful that I had a Blu-ray of it and had a blast watching it. It's the same yeah. same thing with this, right? I bought the Blu-ray because there was a sale that Severn had for all of them, and I actually ended up really really liking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking, I mean, hey, listen, sometimes you get happy fucking happenstance. <laughs> yeah, this would definitely be one of those ones where I get the film going for a group of folks to just watch and sort of laugh at and have a good time and enjoy because that's the type of film that this is. It's sort of like a little party film. It's, yeah. you know, you, you can't really try and put too much on it for being the low budget Italian film that it is. You just kind of have to enjoy what is what is there. And if you're watching it in a group and you can kind of all point out the dummy and, you know, find the flaws, but also like be charmed by the way that they tried and just kind of didn't get there enjoy it for what it is yeah basically was what i'm getting at yeah (laughs) and just be okay with the fact that it's kind of a little cheap and you know silly in some spots because it's a shitload of fun that way yeah exactly all right well i'm done fucking bagging on this movie why don't we skip over to some psyop news and call it quits unless you have some more things to say about the film that are sort of like damning praises no i'm good (laughs) <laughs> All right, with that, we are going to take a little break here and play the song Hex on X on X on, I don't know how many on X's there actually are, by Skinny Puppy on the album Rabies on the Pirate Radio Edit. And for those of you that are listening to the main feed, we are actually going to play the music right out of the film because I got the soundtrack. So everybody be cool about that, all right? When we come back, we'll have some sign news. <laughs> be real cool.
back listening to that. That's one of my favorite Skinny Puppy songs. I really dig that. Nice. <laughs> I think people are starting to maybe hear some of the influence on the Year 8 theme that I did hear from Skinny Puppy from that song. Maybe, maybe not. Some people don't even care. And if you're on the main feed, you don't get to hear it at all. So maybe pay that Patreon money and then you can listen to it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, help us out. Yeah. Cool. Help us out in some so. way, shape or form and support us so that we can keep doing this and giving you some PSYOP news. This one comes from our uh, man in the field, Robert. I'm going with it. Anytime I see his name, I go to it. He actually really does seem to find exactly what we need in PSYOP news. He must yeah. have an incredibly long penis. I'm not sure what that has to do with him finding the news like that, Lee, but you may be right. But, I mean, he's a man. That's why. <laughs> he's the man in the field. He's our he's man, the in the man in the field. He's the man in the field. Our man in the field. Uh, bear cub, tripping balls, and hallucinogenic mad honey rescued by park rangers. Oh, of course you're going to pick that. And he also tagged our friend Bo in, in yes. this because Bo is a big fan of bears because Bo bears Legion podcast. But, yeah, I mean, I, I thought that was exactly how it was supposed to go. Um, so, uh, a brown bear cub in Turkey believed to have gorged herself on a hallucinogenic substance called mad honey was rescued Thursday. The Same. Bear was filmed. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it's gonna I told cost you, you some serious stop. cock. You gotta stop going to Turkey. You're not allowed there anymore. <laughs> but I love the hallucinogenic honey, Matt. Like a lot of my, a lot of your lawyers told me you're not allowed there. <laughs> a lot of them. I'm like the Winnie the Pooh of like hallucinogenic honey. I just can't resist it, and I'm always gonna yeah. get stuck in the tub. And you like to walk around with a shirt, nothing else on. <laughs> yeah, no, we know. What's wrong with shirt cocking it? Clip. <laughs> shirt cocking. <laughs> Straight up porky pig in it, the drafty dome. So, uh, let's see. The the bear was filmed stumbling around and looking worse for wear in the back of a pickup truck that she'd been loaded into after concerned park rangers spotted her acting oddly in a forest in Ducey, in the Ducey province. I love everything honey, about that sentence. Right? Mad honey, known as Deli Bell in Turkey, is a variety of rhododendron honey known to cause psychedelic effects. The bear was taken to a vet to be treated, and the plan is for the fuzzy little tripper to be allowed back into the wild once she's feeling a little better. I love everything about that sentence, including the words fuzzy little tripper. (laughs) Fuzzy little tripper. I call us fuzzy little trippers. Um, (laughs) I have been called that before. (laughs) The Turkish Agriculture and Forestry Ministry announced Friday that the cub had been named Bulklets, and Bulklet's uh, health condition is good. Uh, we will leave her to her living space as soon as possible, the ministry te- tweeted. So there you go. Uh, bear got high on a mad honey. Some good shit, man. Apparently some bees are trying to hook us up with some really good honey. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm very much the Winnie the Pooh of that hallucinogenic honey. Yeah, right? You're just, <laughs> oh, oh, bother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a dragon ate my entire body. Oh, bother. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i had no clips for that like how do i get clips for a bear tripping balls on hallucinogenic honey we just don't have well, them until now we you know what yeah now we have plenty so we just gotta wait for our next hallucinogenic animal to pop up and you got it <laughs> i love that you have such hope that we will get another hallucinogenic animal i just somehow think we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> With our man Robert in the field, we just might. We're going to take the break here. We're going to play the ending Legion show promo. And then after that, we're going to have the song Fascist Jock Itch. Yeah. That's actually the name of it. Fuck. From All right. from Skinny Puppy on the album Rabies. And then we're going to close out this fucking show right after this. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network. Like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed. The Hell Ming Power Hour. Hello, this is the Doom Show. Hero Hero Go Show. Kill the Cast. Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space. Jerry Hates Action. Legion After Dark. Mental Health. Obsessive Cinema. Discourse. Pick Six Movies. The Podcast by the Cemetery. The Podcast on Haunted Hill. The Psycho Semantic Podcast. Rick Radio. House of Wax. Dude Looks Like the 80s. Rabbit and Red Radio. The Shade Cast. Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. 
horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. can clearly hear the influence right now from that song yeah, <laughs> on right. this year's theme. I was a tremendously huge Skinny Puppy fan. I was obsessed with Skinny Puppy at a very early age, like maybe like 13 or 14. I think I don't know why. I- that's all that's all clips. That's all sounds like clips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of uncomfortable ones at that as well, just because I'm yeah. saying that I'm a fan of Skinny Puppy. And yeah, I can see where that would be very disheartening for someone to hear the word Skinny Puppy and be a fanning yeah, of. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> no wonder my best Best friend in high school's mother had such a problem with the name of the band. It is really, yeah, really, really disturbing. It's just a uh, just a horrific name. <laughs> <laughs> it works well for the kind of music that they make. If you'd like to find other instances where we spent way too much time talking about the music that I selected for this week, the previous 365 times that has possibly happened is Ooh. at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. A lot of podcasting. <laughs> That's a lot of podcasting, man. That's like 366 with this week. We have enough now for you to listen to once a day for every day of the year and then yeah. have one left over to go into the next year before you restart. You're lucky. Look how lucky you people are to have that kind of action. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say right now, the best place to get a hold of me and anybody else that wants to talk Legion stuff is our Legion Discord chat. Even Matt showed up there briefly for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm still there. (laughs) He's kind of lurking and just watching what everybody else is reading, and sometimes he interacts. Always watching. (laughs) Always watching. Silently judging and masturbating sobbingly. Well, okay, listen, I told you that in confidence. You're not supposed to say things. When you say it's going to stay between us, it's going to stay between us. (laughs) When I say us, I mean you, me, and the audience. Oh, Oh, okay, well then, yeah, fair game. (laughs) (laughs) No, I actually do not. That's just a joke that worked really well at that point. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to find other jokes that actually work relatively well, I'm not sure how the scheduling is going to work since I've changed jobs. Fuck, finally. What a birthday gift to myself. Uh-huh. <laughs> but on our Instagram feed, cinema underscore psyops, some way, shape, or form, I'm going to get you memes somehow, and I'll just figure out the schedule. All them memes. I'm yeah, sure I'll be able to. Them memes. I'm sure I'll be able to tear it away for once a day to be able to do those posts. And then, of course, that gets shared to our Facebook page, Cinema Psyops, and then the group, Cinema Psyops, and then also to my feed as Court Psyops, all available there on the Book of Face. That. Ah, the Facebook. Uh, <laughs> meta. It's all meta. <laughs> it's all empty is what that basically yeah, is. Yeah, Once well, again, I'll lead you back nice. to the Legion Discord chat. It's a lot more fun there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facebook is it's like a prison on planet bullshit. <laughs> well, if you're a Skinny Puppy fan and you feel like we're being unfair about the name or if you're a Skinny Puppy fan and there's a song that you felt I should have played instead, you can send all of that to cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. You can also write up a diatribe about why we're so wrong about Warriors of the Year 2027. Or you could tell us why we're so right about the Warriors of the Year I was going to say, why does it always have to be wrong? Why can't we just be right on a game? <laughs> yeah, why, why can't we be wrong or right, even though I'm not getting the year right or wrong, even though the year is stylized differently on every release and not quite right in that film? And none of that me. even matters because... We're so confused. We are so confused after covering not only this, but Raiders of Atlanta's last week, and nothing really does matter anymore. So kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch.
start recording on your side. I am doing so. If one, two, three. There we go. All right, at least I can hear you this week. <laughs> That's a good start. Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. This special birthday edition of Cinema Psyops, huh? Yeah, I know. Don't, don't think I won't bring it up when we're actually recording. <laughs> we are actually recording, so you have already brought uh, it up well, on something. When we, when we start the show. Recording. When we start the show is what I meant. I'm leveling the music that I want to use for this week uh, right now, and I got your clips downloaded and I got them added. So as soon as I get that leveling done, which I'm doing right as we're talking right now. so Awesome. Come on, you bastard. Of course, it's going to run slow when I'm trying to do this. Yeah, right. Of course it is. I saw that you guys were actually able to go out a little bit and do a little thing together. Yeah, had a little time together yesterday. So. Yeah, so at least things are normalizing schedule-wise enough to where you can get some time together as a couple. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's that's kind of important. It's something we kind of try to do every Saturday is get some time together and make that happen. So We try to do that on weekends, too, because she's usually just going at a breakneck pace of trying to get as much stuff in as she can, and she loves to see friends as much as she can and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. usually she keeps weekends for me sometimes but sometimes we have to kind of negotiate during the week kind of thing gotta gotta negotiate she just can't say no her friends will be like hey you want to go pick apples in albania and she'll be like yeah let's do that that sounds like fun I'm like, what the, I'm like what the fuck are you thinking bev you don't want to go pick <laughs> apples in albania what is that <laughs> that's actually an example henry rollins used that i've stolen and used for like a decade and a half now but <laughs> it just it, it just demonstrates just how someone who can't say no to just doing something just for the sake of doing something can be yeah yeah right Oh, this is not fun radio for me. Well, we're not doing radio. We're a podcast. That's true. This was the last one, too, that got all screwed up. Does your Audacity have a thing where if it's already open and you try to open a file that it's set to uh, open automatically in Audacity whenever you just click open? Does it does it not open that for you and just kind of, like, not necessarily crash, but Audacity just goes weird and just doesn't do it? Have you ever Some had that happen? T- I've never had it happen to me. The most I've ever had is I will have Audacity open, and if I hadn't already plugged in my microphone, I have to close it and then reopen it with the microphone already plugged in for it to detect it. Oh, uh, it won't detect it no matter what you do you have to just shut it down and then start it up again yeah, yeah you have to close audacity out completely then reopen it and then it will be there in the drop down menu it's a freeware kind of uh program so i'm sure it's going to have a few glitchy things like that it's just that i've noticed yeah. that at least on mac it does that where if you already have a window open and then you just click to open something it'll either just make the window go to like huge maximum size that you already had open without yeah. opening the second window or if audacity is sitting open and you try to open files when it's sitting open with nothing like no windows open it's just the programs running it just doesn't open a fucking thing it just won't recognize that it can do that i have no idea why but it does it's so fucking weird but that's what it does yeah it's like great yeah thanks audacity but again it's free yeah it's fucking freeware and people volunteer their time to work on it and stuff like that and it's a really great program minus these minor things that i'm complaining about because it does it's a fucking workhorse it'll do pretty much anything you throw at it and that's not something to fucking laugh at all right, so this week we're going to do some skinny puppy. <laughs> I love how you're like, uh-huh, yeah. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> That's the, the band. Oh, all right. All right, let's just, I'll just go in order of these of the songs. And we are almost there. Yeah. You hear that, I'm assuming? Yep. All right, I just got the switch. All right, save. Okay, I think we're good to go. And I got nine clips, like you said. Yep. Okay. Well, this might have been actually before Running Man, now that I think about it. 1984, I- when was Running Man? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to look it up because I'm curious. And this is yeah, going to get I, pushed to the outtakes because we got to know. His buddy there gives him this little thing to swallow. And it's supposed to help him so he can escape. Yeah, I've heard that before. And the next thing I know, I got mega dosed with acid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, kindergarten so, wasn't that fun for me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Goddamn kindergarten? Mm, that sounds like fun. What do you mean? It's such like a great trip. You probably saw the Smurfs. I'm kidding. It would have made He-Man a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> All right. Oh, believe me, it absolutely does. <laughs> you know what? I don't want to sit here for four minutes for this thing. So three, right. two, one.
confused. We are so confused after covering not only this, but Raiders of Atlanta's last week, and nothing really does matter anymore. So kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. (laughs) Uh, And I'm also done. I've stopped recording.